Hey folks, welcome to Concept. Today we will learn about the strike selection in various market conditions. Like how can we go ahead and select strike prices and how can we adapt to the changing market environment while selecting the strike prices. Okay. So uh, the idea is simple that when we talk about option trading, so there is a lot beyond than just forecasting. Let's say you forecasted that instrument might go up by 1% or 2%. And that instrument goes up, but the strike that you chose, it didn't give you any returns. So what we will learn is we will choose, we will learn to choose the right strike price. Plus we will understand what is the risk assigned to a particular strike and how can we go ahead and manage that risk in the market by choosing the appropriate strike. So first, let me just take you to the option chain tool. By the way, option chain, is accessible to everyone. It's free for everyone. Everybody who has signed up to Concept has the access to option chain. And it is one of the most simplest and one of the most easily pre presented option chain in the industry. Wherein on the left hand side, we'll get to see call data on the right hand side, we'll get to see the put data. Now, for each and every strike price, there is some delta assigned, right? So delta will tell you the probability of option expiring in the money, but also, it will t tell you the sensitiveness of the option to the underlying price. If the delta out here is 0.49, it's trying to tell you that if Nifty moves up by one point, this option will move up by 0.49 points, okay, which is 0.49 pesa. Similarly, if uh, Nifty goes up by one point, then this will go up by this value, which is 0 0.56. So whatever the delta is, the option premium will move by that much due to one point movement in the underline. So now let's say if I'm picking up uh, this delta, okay, uh, 0.85 delta. That means if Nifty goes up by one point, I'll make 0.85. If Nifty goes down by 0.85, I will lose 0.85, okay? So basically higher the delta, more returns you make in the market. But at the same time, it comes along with a more risk in the market. So this risk is something what we will try to play around with, with optimal strike selection. So let's say opening Excel, let's say <coughs> Delta 0.85, uh, let's say 0.5 and let's say 0.3. Now if Nifty goes up by 100 points, so it would be this, okay. The delta into 100. Okay. So it would be 85, it would be 50, and it would be 30. Okay. So I did it purposely because I just wanted to show how it will work. So it would be 85, it would be 30, and it would be 50. So now the scenario is that if Nifty goes up by 100 points, I'm making a good chunk on the in the money option on a higher delta option. But if Nifty goes down by 100 points, I'm losing 85. I'm losing 50 and I'm losing 30. <clears throat> so where my maximum losses? My maximum losses at this particular point. Now I'll ask myself a question and then I will choose the strike prices. Okay, so that question is, first question that what is my view on the underlying? Okay, so let me just erase all of this. So first question is that what is my view on the underlying? Then I'm saying that my view on the underlying is bullish. Okay. Now, what I'll ask is, what is the conviction on the bullish view on? If the conviction comes out to be, uh, let's say a high conviction trade. So I'm writing HC for high conviction. So what I'll do, I'll prefer a strike price with a relatively higher delta. Okay, slightly higher delta. I'm using words such as a relatively slightly is because Let's say my conviction is high, that Nifty will go up. But does that tell that the Nifty will go up 100 percentage? No, because I am forecasting something. So whenever you're forecasting something, you're assuming few things, you're expecting that the Nifty might go up. It is not anywhere written that if you look at so-and-so indicator, if you look at this and this indicator, the strike rate will be 100 percentage when you are predicting the direction. So there might be a possibility, despite having a high conviction 
I might still go wrong in the market. So if I choose this strike price, which is a 0.85 delta strike, and if my view goes wrong, I'm going to lose 85 rupees. But if my view goes wrong, and if I have selected a 0.3 delta, I'll just lose 30 rupees. Now the scenario is I am having a high conviction. So the idea is I am having a high conviction. That means the probability of move going in my favor is very high. But still I can't go ahead and pick up this, which is a deep in the money. So what I'll do, I'll select strike prices between 0.6 or 0.65 for that matter to 0.5. This will be my range of strike prices what I will pick up. 0.65 to 0.5. Because I will need to take some risk, right, to get that additional alpha in the market. That additional alpha is nothing but 0.65 delta strike or 0.6 delta strike. But if someone is a little bit conservative, one can prefer a 0.6 delta. If if someone is more aggressive, 0.65 delta would be also doable. But deep in the money, another problem happens to be that, you know, the liquidity might get an issue. So that is the reason 0 0.6 to 0 0.5 will give you enough liquidity and it will also maintain uh, the delta effect on your trades. Coming to medium conviction. So let's say I am having medium conviction. So what I prefer? 0.5 to 0.45. Uh, okay. Low conviction. 0.45 to 0.35. Okay. This is something what I will prefer. That whenever I am trading in options, first thing is I'll ask myself a question. But what is my uh, conviction? And then eventually I will choose the strike prices accordingly. But I would say in most of the cases, 0.5 to 0.45 delta is typically where most of us would go ahead and create a trade which will maintain liquidity, give us good liquidity as well. Now coming to this was directional and opposite would be on the put side because the put deltas are negative. So this is what we can do. Apart from that, if I want to sell options and let's say I am non-directional on the market. That means that I don't have any directional forecast. I do, I'm not saying that market uh, will move in a particular direction. I'm expecting that the market might move in a range. So that means I will sell options, non-directional option selling. So for that, lucrative strike prices to right is equal to highest theta decay strikes. So wherever I am seeing that the theta decay is highest, I will go ahead and sell those particular strike prices. So over here, as you can see, the theta decay is highest on this minus 7.5 on uh, 19350. So it would be generally at the ATM, but still, if you see, it is slightly, uh, you know, because of the alternate figures, it is more higher on slightly in the money strike price call option. So wherever the theta decay is highest, I will prefer that strike price to sell. Now, generally, the theta. Okay, mostly in most of the cases, theta will be highest in ATM. So what could be my uh, option selling trade? I can go ahead and sell ATM options. So in this case, I can go ahead and sell maybe 19350 here and 19350 here. And I can buy the hedges so that I don't get undefined loss. Protect myself. with hedges using OTM options. And you know, for consolidating market, this is what we will do. For uh, trending market, this is what we will do. And this is how we can keep on adapting to the changing market environment and by using a simple strike selection methodology. So that was it from my side for today's video. Thank you. See you all in the next video.